today we're going to turn this Raspberry Pi into a Modbus TCP slave reading this temperature sensor. This will be my first video on the Raspberry Pi as a Modbus slave tutorial. Um, what you'll need is a DS18B20 a resistor and of course a Raspberry Pi. I'm using the Pi 3. I've got it hooked up to a monitor as you can see. Got some code there. And we're going to read the temperature using one of the input registers. So let's get to it. All right, log in here. Let's see if we got it connected. A20, you can do that easily in the boot folder. You just need to modify the config.txt file. And you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you add a overlay. One YG one wire GPO and we need to change our pin to pin 4. Get rid of my HT11 one. Alright. Save it. And we reboot. Alright, so it's in the sysbus folder. And there's off to the right um, a one wire or W1 directory that we need to get into. So we'll cd into W1. Let's see if anything's there. And we see something. So if you see something weird, so temperature sensors start with the 28. If it doesn't, then that means our resistor probably isn't doing its thing. So let's we can try and mess with that real quick, and I'll get back to you. Okay, I've got it wired up right this time. Um, I just had it flipped wrong. The ports are flipped when you break it out on this ID. So the 5 volt is on these first two on the right side. And then the pin 4 is off there left. And then we have the resistor in there. And as you can see, we've got uh, 28 on our ID for that temperature sensor. Now let's dig into some of the code. So this is, uh, I copied this from the callback server example that's on the Pi Modbus tutorial website. I found it very useful because we can, in a way, hijack the data store and return whatever we want from the data store objects. Let let me show you how I got this set up, that the things that I've changed. I've added a quick method to grab the temperature from the file. You can see that all we're doing is opening a, a sensor at its path and reading it and returning the temperature times 100. In my example, we're going to be returning the temperature 7400 instead of 74 degrees in your Modbus register because we can't do real numbers as a word, so you'll just have to scale it by 100. Let me quickly explain the data block, the callback data block. When we init, we're going to be saying which devices we have. We're going to be just doing one temperature sensor. We're going to going to be putting a length at the end of it. We're going to be returning a value for the length. If you've never used PyCharm, it's very handy. In fact, I'm going to do debug point right here and show you what it looks like in the console. So if I run, go to debug, let's debug from up here, temperature sensors. So I've got, it hit my debug point, and if you look below, not that far, we've got our variables currently. If I step through this, I'm going to hit the, hit the step button, I'm going to see self.value, so we're going to open up self. So, register, so at the beginning, we're setting all our temperatures to be zero. Um, currently, we're not going to be getting any temperatures because I've only got one temperature sensor hooked up. So I'm going to stop this and we're going to change my devices that we had. Back to that. So in my callback data block, I've got a couple asynchronous functions that don't pause up the program that are called on a different thread and then return when they're done with the data 
to a certain function, which is updating our temperature values. In the callback data block example that they have, they have devices in a path. And so I thought I would create a device library that I could easily be able to get news update using a class. Up here I, I created a class object where we store the path, what type it is, a callback method used to update it, and then a way to store the value. And when we call our device.update, it's then going to call its method, which would be probably temperature from file, and store it to its value. So when we scroll down, we even see all that. So when we scroll down to our get temperatures, you can see that I'm going through these devices, printing the device path just for debugging purposes, telling it to update. Then I'm creating that value map to the value of that device and then returning all the values that we've gone through. We're going to only have one value, so I'm going to comment all these out. And I forget the shortcut. There it is control backslash and we're going to try to figure out what that temperature sensors ID is. Hey look at that. We've got it up there. So I'll copy that and we'll paste it into right here. In fact if you do control D it, it duplicates the line. Just a couple of hits. So I'm going to keep that other one in my memory. I'm going to do that. All right, so at Modbus input register 1, we're going to have a temperature. And let's see below, we're going to start the TCP server at 502, port 502, or 5020. You can see that I'm reading my device map. I create a data block using those devices, and then I create a data store for my Modbus slave. I'm only saving it for the input registers. You'll see it. This is everything. Everything else has none. My Pi is just doesn't have any holding coils or discrete inputs. Just input registers. And then we have a context where we start our TCP server. All right. So I'm going to start this program. Um, I think it's really warm in here, so we might get 70. Five degrees. Who knows? In fact, we can cheat. Cat twenty-eight. Whatever is that? Okay, twenty degrees Celsius. So yeah, for those who don't know, I'm in America, where we use good old Fahrenheit. I convert it in my code to Fahrenheit down up here. This will go on my GitHub. This whole project, this temperature sensor pie, where you can do whatever you want with it. I'll also be doing a controlling GPIO version of this later. All right, quick change before we go into it. I took out this part of it because I was being redundant. I wasn't changing anything. If you want to see what it does, this little icon here, um, it shows you the original method and we can see what it does. It just goes through your values array. And so I'm not going to override that. I'm just going to comment it out and we should hopefully see something. I've got it running down here. I changed it so it outputs the temperature along with the sensor ID. I'm going to open up a console and bring it down here so we can see it. All right, so quick IPython from Modbus. Let's do client equals localhost temperature equals client dot read input registers. So even though we put one as our first register, we are going to read the zero. Just need to remember that. And we're going to read one of them. And to get the final result, we need to type the thing in correctly. And we got 7250. Wonderful. 7200 degrees in here. Oh man, it's hot. All right. Thanks for watching. I will try to simplify this and post it to my GitHub just so it uses one temperature sensor and you don't have to use it. I'll just leave it the way it is. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for, for watching.